Sonic and Tails. Today I'm making a double sided kick to celebrate Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to Koali Pops. My name is James Marsden and today we are making a double sided buttercream cake. Now if you haven't already, you should check out my double sided turning red cake. I was gonna do a double sided Sonic cake, but I thought it'd be really fun to make Tails. So we're creating two characters on the same cake. I'm excited about this, you guys. I hope it turns out well. Well, you've seen the th thumbnails. I haven't even started the cake yet, so. You tell me. <laughs> now to create this cake, I'm using my PVC pipe system. I've got an acrylic disc. I'm using styrofoam to create like his neck. And I'm gonna be using another piece of styrofoam to create the bottom of his head. Now I created a Sonic blue cake. It's just vanilla. I'm gonna place it on top and I'm gonna start to layer buttercream in between each of my layers. So to create this cake, I'm just using two eight inch round cakes. I cut them into four equal layers. Usually I wouldn't cut them into four layers, but I think I needed three round cakes. So I cut them in half so that I could add more buttercream in between the layers, which also adds height. Yeah, so this cake is gonna be super sweet. <laughs> I got my final cake. There we go. And I actually still don't think that's enough. <laughs> and I'm going to use a six inch half dome cake to finish this off. I should have baked more cake, but I didn't. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> now once all of my cakes were stacked, I started to carve. This was kind of an unusual cake to carve because Tails is so much smaller than Sonic. So when I was creating the back of Sonic spikes, you can see that they come to like this very abrupt stop. That way they wouldn't interfere with any of Tails' features. So this is my sculpt so far. It's looking really good. This is the Sonic side and then this is the Tails side. I did make a huge mistake and that's that my reference picture, which is really dirty from all the carving. <laughs> this is the size of the cake with buttercream. And because of that, I had to make my cake smaller so that I could account for like the one centimeter thick icing that's gonna go on top. Next time, I need to make sure that the picture I'm using accounts for the buttercream so that I can make it larger and not waste a ton of cake. The amount of cake that I carved away to create this could have created another cake. I could have made knuckles, but that's just something I think I need to be aware of. And if you're gonna attempt to do 3D cakes, then that's something you should think about as well. Now I'm gonna give this a crumb coat and I'm actually gonna give it a crumb coat with the color that's gonna go on top. So for Tails, I'm gonna cover him with orange. And then for Sonic, I'm going to cover him with blue. Once I'm finished with my crumb coat, this is gonna go into the fridge to set up and then I'm going to add my final coat of buttercream. Now when I was adding my final layer of buttercream, I placed it in the fridge after I added on each color. I figured that it wouldn't blend together as much and I ended up having some really nice border lines. You can also see that I put parchment paper on the sides in between Sonic and Tails. I just really wanted to make sure that the blue didn't mix with the orange. Once all of my colors were on, I put it in the fridge, took it out, and started to carve. Now, for this carve, I'm using carving tools. I'm trying to figure out what is the best way to create these cakes. And the carving tools work perfectly, but the only downside is, when I'm using an offset spatula to carve, I can take the buttercream and put it back into my bowl. Whereas when I'm using the carving tools, they just fall onto my cake board. And as soon as they get soft, it becomes so messy to clean up, you know, but I don't know, you know, I really love how easy it makes the cake decorating process. So I might still use them. Now, when I was happy with my carve, I added hedgehog blue ears made out of fondant. And I also gave tails ears, fox ears or cat ears. Is he a fox or a cat? I'm not sure. <laughs> He's a fox, right? Or is he a cat? <laughs> I don't know. So here's video of me talking about this cake process, but I actually shot this while it was raining. And the rain is so loud, you can't hear what I'm saying. So that's why I'm just like shooting voiceover. Here, I'm talking about how I bought toys to use as guides for how to create the dimension of each of these characters. And here, I'm like going on about how buttercream is a better medium to create sculpted cakes because it's easy to fix your mistakes. 
With Tails, I made his face a little too long. And if I were working with fondant and I screwed up on my sculpt, it would be so hard to fix it. I'm not sure if I could fix it. But with buttercream, I just shaved off a few layers of buttercream at the top of his head and I had the perfect height, which made my cake sculpt more precise. Now when I was finished with my sculpt, I used a paintbrush to create some fur texture. And then when I thought I was happy with it, I started to add two fondant eyes for Sonic and two for Tails. I started with the whites of their eyes and then I gave them noses. Sonic's nose, I would not have known it was that long because from the picture, it just looks like a ball. But it's actually a really long oval shape. After that, I gave them pupils and catch lights and voila. My double-sided Sonic and Tails cake was complete. Or so I thought. <laughs> I shot all of the like hero shots for this cake and then I realized that I didn't like the fur texture. It just looked too smooth. So after I finished shooting all of this, I went back and added some more detail. I took a piping bag and piped out lines of buttercream onto my entire cake surface. I put it in the fridge afterwards so that I could set up and then I blended it with more buttercream and I ended up with these really nice lumps that looked like hedgehog quills. I repeated the same process with tails, which actually gave his bangs a little bit more depth. And voila, my Sonic and Tails cake is actually complete this time. What do you think? I love it. The fur texture makes such a big difference on Sonic. Without it, he kind of looks like a seal hedgehog hybrid. It just looks fantastic. I think it would have been better with tails if I had more tight knit texture. That would make him look so much fluffier. But you know what? I'm so proud of it. I love the color in their eyes. I love the expression on Sonic's face. Tails, it could be better. But for a double sided cake, it's really good. Now I'm curious, are you gonna go to the theaters to watch Sonic the Hedgehog 2? First one was so good, and this one looks better. And it just Alba's in it. Oh my gosh, he's the best. Have you guys watched Luther? Oh, that show is insane. Now if this video is already up and you've seen the movie, let me know your thoughts on the movie down below. Also, let me know your cake ideas as well. Now I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you, I'll see you very soon. Bye. Good morning everyone. So I'm finishing my Sonic and Tails cake video and I thought I'd update you on the current format of my YouTube videos. It's like split up into three different chunks. The first seven to 10 minute chunk is the actual YouTube video. It's me and my commentary while you see the cake decorating process. The second chunk is alternative takes and bloopers and sometimes I just like I go off topic and it's not really relevant to the cake decorating process so it's what I would usually cut out of the YouTube video but it's entertaining so I wanted to find a way to leave it in. I also had an aha moment because I have to cut all of this footage down for TikTok, for Instagram reels, for Facebook reels which are two different things, but not really. Then there's Pinterest and YouTube Shorts. And so I figured why don't I just format all of these clips for social media so I don't have to edit them all over again when I'm posting. It saved me a lot of time and if you're doing YouTube videos, you might wanna do this as well because it keeps all of your clips organized in one place. That way I don't have to look through a bunch of different video files. Now the last chunk is what would usually go on my second channel, Mighty Mix, except I don't have time to run a second channel right now. It's just too much work. It's just the footage of my hands making the cakes over really nice calming music. And I would watch Mighty Mix specifically for that type of content because I just like watching my hands do this. I just find it really soothing. It's kind of therapeutic. And so I wanted to include that in this video as well. And I'm kind of toying with the idea of just having that be a separate YouTube video with a very specific thumbnail. But for now, it's just gonna be at the end. You'll also notice that the title card, the letters are very small and in the middle. And there's a kitty cat. And that's so I can cut it down for social media because TikTok is now allowing 10 minute videos. And I'm pretty sure Instagram's gonna be doing the same thing. And so all of that footage will fit in the social media aspect ratio. I never took social media um, seriously before because I'm an introvert and it is not in my nature to be this active. <laughs> but all of this stuff, all of these different chunks keep me organized and it shows you different versions of the cake decorating process. So without further ado, here's chunk two and three.
Carving my Sonic in Tails cake was very interesting. I had to figure out where Sonic's head ends and Tails' head begins. And I was going to create this very organic looking like gradient of color so that you can see the blue of Sonic turn into the orange of Tails. Oh my gosh, I was like such an overachiever. I got lazy. So I ended up just cutting the back half of Sonic's spike so that there was a clear line between the two characters. Yeah, so much simpler. Less of a headache. Working with multiple colors of buttercream at the same time is very scary. It's easy for all of the colors to blend together while the buttercream is soft. So I came up with a strategy. I just placed the cake in the fridge after adding each color so they wouldn't have a chance to blend. It gave me nice clean lines, none of the colors bled together, and it looks very polished. I feel like such a sculpting artist when I'm using these tools on my cake. Look at me, super professional with these new tools. Oh my gosh, who am I? Leonardo Di Cap Da Vinci, the, the, the famous old guy. That's me. They made sculpting my characters easy, but the trade-off was that when the buttercream fell on the cake board and got soft, it was such a hassle to clean. I used up so many dish towels, but I still might use these again. I'm still just weighing the pros and cons. Now, like an idiot, you guys, I took all of the glamour shots of my cake and then I realized that I wasn't done. <laughs> the texture that I added for my Tails and Sonic cake was too subtle. No one can see it. So I added more texture. I used a piping bag to pipe out some lines, put it in the fridge to set up, and then blended it with more buttercream. This looked a lot better and ended up looking like hedgehog quills. I almost didn't do it because of laziness, but I'm glad I made the changes. I wish the tail side of my cake had a better expression. I kind of don't know what that guy's thinking. Cause Sonic looks like he's about to win this race. He looks determined. He's got that like cheeky looking smirk. But Tails, his smile's like subtle. He kind of looks like that guy who's just pretending to be okay even though his life is falling apart. Everything is fine. Let me just put on a smile and try my best to get through the day. <laughs> I should have just exaggerated his expression, but I didn't and this is the outcome.
Mm-hmm.